Jürgen. At first, she admits that she didn't really believe the story of Jürgen. She actually thought that he was crazy. It was when she read that Jürgen had confessed to a priest of his first crime in the confessional that she felt touched and developed an affection for him. She felt that the priest he had confessed to should have done more to help Jürgen at the time. Instead, she was upset that he had heard this horrific confession and did nothing to help him. When it was reported that Jürgen Barsch was in solitary confinement, Gisela felt the urge to write to him. She felt a strong need, a duty to reach out to him and try to help. Gisela wrote him three letters before Jürgen sent a reply. The reply was short and to the point, and it read, Dear Miss Dyker, After reading your letters, I don't feel any need to correspond with you. Sincerely, Jürgen Barsch. This didn't deter Gisela. She continued to write. Obviously, her persistence touched Jürgen and the two began to exchange letters. In January 1973, once Jürgen had been moved to the state psychiatric hospital Rotland near Eichelborn near Lippstadt, finally the two met for the first time in person. The first visit was short, overwhelming to Gisela even after being told what it would be like there. After a week, they met again. Unfortunately, the pair were irritated by a nurse who decided to sit down at the table with them during their meeting, and she said it became awkward. On the third visit, February 15th, 1973, Jürgen asked Gisela to become his wife. At the time, she asked for four weeks to think about it, to which Jürgen agreed. After the four weeks had passed, she returned to Jürgen and she said yes to the marriage. Gisela's parents did not react well to this news, and initially, Gisela was afraid of public reaction, as well as worrying that she may lose her job. She was still in a probationary period, and although they couldn't fire her for getting married, she did say that if someone wanted to get rid of her, they would find a way, and during a probationary period, it was okay. On the 2nd of January 1974, Jürgen and Gisela were married at the Eichelborn Hospital. Her parents and siblings refused to come. The doctors at the hospital had advocated for the marriage and deemed that it was an important contribution to Jürgen's healing. For example, the sexual normalization of their patient. They even went as far as telling the couple that they would have an opportunity to consummate their marriage either on or shortly after their wedding day. It never eventuated, however, because the hospital turned around and determined that it actually would be unfair for the other patients to allow them to do so. Gisela said in interviews that she wanted to help Jürgen, and the only way that she knew how to do that was to be his wife. She commented that whenever she would ask information from doctors, they wouldn't give it to her as his friend or fiancé, so logically the answer was to marry him. With Gisela's assistance, Jürgen had previously refused to consider it, but eventually changed his mind and made requests for castration. All of his requests were rejected by the courts, Castration was only available as an option if the offender asked for it and there were good practical reasons. On April 28, 1976, Barsh was finally on the operating table about to have his castration procedure. He died after there was an error in the drugs given to him as anaesthetic. Subsequently, the doctor who administered the drug had killed other patients in the same way and he was sentenced to nine months probation. Jürgen was buried in a family plot at the Friedhof Dautmürken in Baden, Germany. His parents continued to run their butcher shop and lived in the village until their deaths. Although there have been many other serial killers who committed crimes more gruesome and heinous than those of Jürgen Barsch, for some reason he was one of the most famous and most reported in German criminal history. His case, though, is a true reflection of how important the first years of a child's development is critical in their psychological moulding. Jürgen killed because he didn't want to be killed. He punished because he didn't want to be punished. Jürgen's victims were Klaus Jung, 8 years old, 1961. Peter Fuchs, 13 years old, 1965. Ulrich Karl Weiss, 10 years old, 1965. Manfred Grassmann, 8 years old, 1966. And Ernst Peter Friese, 15 years old, who escaped 1966. 
That brings us to the end of another episode. I hope that you've enjoyed learning about Jürgen and his crimes. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to check out our website, veritastruecrime.com, for more information about what's coming up or to get in touch. If you've got access to Facebook, please stop by and like our page and maybe leave a five-star review if you're enjoying the show so far. I hope that you'll join us again for another episode. Remember, the truth is mighty and will prevail. Until next time, friends.